change, defined by Webster as the act of passing from one phase to another. Our guest today comes from just such a change, a sort of rags to riches story, if you will, from a poor struggling young man to a multi-millionaire. We'll talk about Barry White's philosophy on this edition of Black Focus. <laughs> Good Sunday morning. I'm Jay Johnson, your host, and this is Black Focus. Our guest is the multi-talented Barry White. We're going to ask Barry about, first of all, who is Barry White? <laughs> Jay Johnson. <laughs> Barry White is a young man who came from the private areas of Los Angeles and decided at 17 years old that he wanted to do something positive with his life. What kind of life, what kind of childhood was yours, Barry? Uh, very simple. Uh, we didn't have the, a lot of the materialistic treasures that one of them could have as growing up. My mother uh, did the best she could with what she had to work with. It was my mother, my brother, and myself. And we didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have cars. We didn't have uh, things that people normally look upon as being successful. But we had a lot of love and my mother has always taught us fair play, positive thinking. Uh, Barry White's no different than many other black young men coming out of the private areas and the ghettos of America. What is the way out, Barry? I mean, let's, let's be for real. Let's talk frank about the things that, uh, that you possess. You don't possess the ability to read or write music. Right. And yet you are compared with Gershwin. Um, to know music is to feel it. It is not to read it. It is not to write it. It's a great philosophy to be able to read and write man's interpretation of music. But music's own interpretation is to feel it. It's no different than the Africans or the Brazilians or the Latin Americans, uh, the uh, Puerto Ricans, who all are into different rhythms. It's a feeling, and music is a feeling. And I think that no different than most um, other black people, I was blessed with the talents of rhythm, uh, the sense of direction when it comes to clarity of music, listening, appreciation. My mother uh, is greatly responsible for my ears. Uh, she played a lot of classical music uh, when we were coming up. And so I've gotten the exposure of classical, the exposure of Latin, the exposure of jazz, the exposure of rock and roll, uh, country, gospel is where I'm from. Uh, so all of those different approaches of music is all wrapped up in Barry White's creativity. What would you say is the correct adage to crossing the bridge that you crossed so so valiantly from black to white at the same time? When you hit the market, you were a sensational crossover artist. Um, the music relating to people, love is something everybody relates to. Um, ever since Barry White began, his philosophy has always been about love. Love is a very powerful force and in many ways the most positive force on this planet. And I just think that all nationalities of people, be where, it doesn't matter where they are, they all relate to love. You can say, I love you to any language, to a woman, she'll understand it. It's, um, it's a universal language. Love is definitely a universal language. Music has been your life and has been good to you. You started yes. out how? Where did you first make your, your inroads into music? Uh, in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, when I was 17. From 17, from 1961 up until 1971, Barry White was struggling, very tough, and it was very rough out there. Uh, Hollywood at that time was white orientated. Uh, they were primarily rock. A uh, few black artists would come out of there, but nobody ever um, made any definite impressions. 
So L.A. was looked on, upon as uh, the West Coast sound, the rock thing, you know. Most of the hits was coming out of New York and Philadelphia, Detroit, uh, Chicago. Um, I was just fortunate. I was just fortunate. And I was told to leave Los Angeles. You're not going to make it here. Uh, go to Detroit, go to Motown, go to Stax Records in, in uh, uh, Memphis. Go somewhere where they can relate to you, Barry White. You're not going to make it here. But I have been taught all my life that uh, if there's a will, there is definitely a way. Somebody offered you that way. It wasn't what you really wanted, but uh, hand clapping got you into music, right? <laughs> That's true, Jay. Uh, my first hundred dollars that I earned in the record industry was clapping my hands on a record called Tossing an Ice Cube. Leon Rene was the owner of Class Records at that time. They had Bobby Day, Rock and Robin, Eugene Church, Pretty Girls. And um, I was very thrilled to meet Leon Rene. And they were doing a session on a song, hand clapping thing, and they'd hired a lot of people from the union to try to clap this difficult time. And I was sitting there, and I told a friend of mine that invited me to the session, I can, I can do that rhythm. Then I went in there, and one take, we had it. And that was the launching That was the thing. beginning. Then what happened? Nothing. <laughs> for how uh, long? For about four months. Then I got called for this group called the Upfronts to sing bass, and I was delighted because I had made up my mind I'm going to start moving out of this um, poverty situation into a more positive situation. So any jobs that came up, I was very honored, I was very enthusiastic, I was very committed, you know. Uh, I found all my life, Jay, that commitment, attitude, and loyalty to oneself is key factors of success and that means you can do anything you want to do if you're committed to it if you're loyal to yourself and your craft you'll make it mm -hmm. and you did and the success has been phenomenal how many gold records do you now possess we're probably at 68 now i've stopped counting jay <laughs> uh 68 gold and 31 32 platinum that's worldwide Explain a platinum record to our listeners. Uh, platinum means a million units sold on an album or more. To sell platinum 45, you must sell 2 million. Uh, this is the crossover factor. It's the factor that uh, so many people relate to the music, to the concept, to love. And uh, I am very grateful to my fans, to the people who gave Barry White a chance, who are still giving him a chance, to you, Jay, who've been a friend throughout my career, the city, your listeners. Uh, there's many people responsible for Barry White sitting here with you today beside Barry White. Trust me. You can't. Trust me. Let, me. let me ask you, Barry, about the entire entourage. Now, there is Barry White, then there is Love Unlimited, then there's the Love Unlimited Orchestra. Yes. Then there's Unlimited Gold Records? Yes. Uh, Pick a number and go from there. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's um, Love Unlimited, which is my heart. Linda, Diane, and Glodine, and Glodine is my wife. Um, that's the greatest artist I've ever known, was Love Unlimited. And they are all married now. Linda's living in Switzerland. Uh, Dee Dee's living in Pomona, California, and Glodine's living with me, so <laughs> everybody's fine and tucked away. Uh, they were the beginning. That was my first hit record I ever had in my life, was on Love Unlimited, Walking in the Rain with the One I Love in 1972. And uh, it's the Love Unlimited Orchestra I named after Love Unlimited because I centered more things around them. I could have called it Barry White Orchestra, but I love Love Unlimited spirit so much. What they represent to me is the utopia of an artist. Um, the orchestra, I have always loved instrumental songs over hearing sound, songs sang with artists. Uh, I like instrumentals, so I created the Love Unlimited Orchestra. I've always loved instrumentals. And when I remember when I went to Russ Regan, who was then 20th Century's president, 
and told him that uh, I wanted to do an orchestra album. He looked at me like I was out of my mind because there was no instrumentals. That We've had scattered instrumentals during the years, Quiet Village, this one or that one. But um, Love Theme came from Love Unlimited's album, which I wrote for them. That was their theme. And uh, it became a number one record worldwide, and that enabled me to create the Love Unlimited Orchestra. All right, let's talk about Unlimited Gold, his own record company, as Black Focus continues right after this. On the next edition of Our Magazine... The vacation can be a pleasure instead of a pain. Bonnie Strauss explores how to ensure hassle-free summer trips. Planning is the key. In a three-part series, funny lady Joan Rivers shares her feelings on success with Gary Collins. He said to me, you're going to be a star, Johnny Carson. He changed my life. Mail order savings and more. We make every hour count. Monday at 4 on Wish TV. Looking for a warm weather break? A refreshing visit to the Indianapolis Zoo is sure to put some exciting spring back into your life. Now's the time to get out and get involved with Mother Nature and more than 500 exotic and domestic animals. Renew acquaintances with zoo old-timers and meet and greet all the new animal arrivals. Plan an invigorating visit now to the Indianapolis Zoo, where every day is as exciting as springtime. Open daily at 10 a.m. Call 547-3577 for a schedule of activities. <coughs> The Maestro, Barry White, is our guest on this edition of Black Focus. I'm Jay Johnson, your host. And just prior to going to the break, Barry, we were talking about Love uh, Unlimited Gold Records. Uh, what I want to ask you is, in a time when folks are having so many problems with record companies, when I say people, I'm talking about executives, and so many companies are folding because of uh, taping, how do you survive a black man with a black company? Um, I am not excluded from that, that nightmare of uh, piracy and bootlegging. Um, I look at it like this, Jay. When man becomes disenchanted with just making a living, when he turns to greed, it kills him every time. The same companies who are crying, we're going out of business, we're going out of business, we're going out of business, are the same companies who make the blank tape. So you have a record division and a tape division. The blank tape enables one to record music today. Technology has put everything in our hands where we can record music today without paying for it. Uh, that's too bad that the industry put that, that, that kind of weapon out there to kill themselves. I cannot expect for a person, regardless of what color he is or who he is, to want to hear a song and can't afford to buy it. I cannot blame that person for picking up his tape recorder and taping it because we put the element in his hand to do it. We gave him permission. So how do I survive? I keep making my records. I'll keep making my records. I'll keep making my records. Some kind of way, the elements and the things that guides and guards my life takes care of Barry White. Is there some kind of underlying uh, guideline for this? Is there some kind of way out? Is there some kind of form of survival for the artist? Let's not Let's remove you now from the company, uh, for the artist itself. Uh, it's a big problem, Jay. Um, I've been to many seminars. Uh, they're trying to come up with different electronic devices to keep people from being able to record. Um, greed is a funny thing. Once you take a bite of it, it tends to turn on you and start eating you up. Uh, the industry was making enough money. The industry was growing fast enough. The industry was progressing enough without getting that greedy, that hoggish, becoming 
that um, bullish on, a mo on money. It's a problem in America. Same thing happened to disco. Uh, it started out as an art form for the public. And everybody saw it as quick money, naturally. We're a capitalistic country. Everybody jumped on it. And uh, before you knew it, it was over. Uh, the record industry is no, no different, and we are no exception to greed and the repercussions of greed. Mm -hmm. What can you do now? If, if you find that, that the record companies are basically responsible, uh, on one hand making the tape and on the other hand making the album, who then is at, at fault? Uh, the company is. What uh, are we going to do about that? I don't why, know why would the consumer have to suffer? Uh, the consumer, in my opinion, is not suffering. The consumer began taping because the cost of records. That's right. Uh, in 1975, I was the only artist in the industry that begged the industry not to raise the prices. I begged 20th Century Records, don't raise my record prices. Number one, Jay, music is a free commodity. You're not supposed to have to pay for it. That's the first rule. Since you have to pay for it, it must be regulated. It must be um, handled with care because it's, um, the record business is a very lucrative business. It's the only business where a man can go to sleep tonight poor and wake up tomorrow a rich man. So when you have an industry like that, everyone must be aware of the temptations, of the traps that's waiting for you. What is going to happen to the new artists coming in? They're going to have to come in with a different philosophy. They can't just come into this business as a singer. They got to come in with the intentions of becoming a great singer, becoming a great songwriter, becoming their own record producer, become, learning what the management business is, learning what engineering is. If it's possible, they can become a musician. Fine. We are dealing with your life. No different than this show you do, the radio you do. If you go in the work late all the time, Jay, you won't have no gig. If you go to, the, go to your job and only know how to do one thing, Jay, you are in serious trouble. Any kind of uh, person who is looking for a living, to earn his own living, a lot of people play with this record business, man. They use this glamour as a beautiful little bubble to flash in front of the outer world. But that bubble is very dangerous. The record industry has split up more families than it's put together. Uh, it's tough to get insurances for certain things being involved and being uh, that your money is made from this industry. So instead of coming into a starry eyed and grinning and, 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 you know, and acting like you're crazy, you should come in very serious knowing that this is my livelihood. And the more I know about this, this animal that I'm dealing with, the better protected I'm going to be in case I can't sing no more, in case I can't write anymore, in case I can't play anymore. What about business administration? What about publishing? What about accounting? What about management? There is many, many lucrative entities in this industry. The word there is show business. Huh. Black Focus continues right after this. Eight on the Scene News. Our weekly feature reporters cover Indianapolis inside and out. Monday and Friday, Dr. Walt Fisher prescribes pet care advice with his helpful house call. Tuesday, lifestyle reporter Jay Johnson brings the Hoosier experience into focus. Wednesday, Leslie Olson profiles today's young people throughout Indiana's heartland. And Thursday, film critic Bob Berry takes you to the movies so you can get the big picture. Together, they're part of the team that covers all of central Indiana. Tall kids come in all sizes, short, medium, and so big. But the important thing about being tall is not how you handle a basketball at all, but how you stand up for what's right. You'll feel tall when you do, even if it means sticking your neck out. If you need someone to help, call Lutheran Child and Family Services. For 100 years, we've been tall on help when you need it. Okay? 
And welcome back to Black Focus. I'm Jay Johnson, your host. Our special guest is my good friend who flew all the way here just for the show, Mr. Mm. Barry White. Believe it. Barry, the last record that you had called Change made some profound statements. You were going away from the love zone to talk to young people about a change. What was that change? Um, it wasn't just to young people. It was to everyone. And I don't think I left the concept of love. I think the mere fact that someone takes our time to remind you of something positive is concern and love for people. Uh, it's humanitarian now. Barry White has always been concerned about people, uh, especially young people. But change was directed to all people. Uh, the reason the lyrics kind of bend a little bit towards getting education, don't forget it, because if you do, you will regret it. That's not just high school, junior high education. That is to the man that's 35 years old, the mm -hmm. man that's 45 years old, you better know how to do something. Especially with the job situation. Especially with this. what's coming. Change is a warning of what's coming. What's coming there? Technology. See, what we see today is just the taking off of it. It's still coming. Technology is going to replace human beings. Unless you know how to, con to program a computer or how to fix one, you're going to be in trouble in that area. Uh, in our industry, the industry has changed. Studios going out of business every day in Hollywood because technology has taken it from the big studio to a little space. Um, something new is happening in the 80s, just for you, but you can't get lazy. All you do is just make up your mind that you're going to do something. The key to life is your attitude. Make sure you're doing what you want to do. You know how many people go to college for four or five years and get out and never do or use what they went to college for? Wasting time. Uh, your goals can unfold right before your eyes, but you got to have certain priorities in order. Uh, the key to life, uh, another key to life is education. Uh, don't forget it, because if you do, you will regret it. That's anyone that is, don't, don't understand uh, how to do something, how to earn a living, how to make some money. Um, it's a warning. I have seven children of my own. It was a warning to them. No one can escape what is getting ready to come upon us. We are not, en we're not enough involved in, our, in the decisions that's made for this country. The people of this country really don't know what's going on. They're being told certain things, we're being told this. But when you really stop and take inventory and observe what is taking place, there's a movement going down in America. It's called moving people from one position to another. And it's not a fast movement. It's going to take time. But one day we're going to look around like 1986, 1987, 88. They're going to say, well, where did all this go? Well, where did all of that go? Oh, the new computer's doing it now. Oh, the computers are doing it now. Well, what are you doing with the computers? Well, I don't know nothing about that. Our educational systems tell uh, tell the young people uh, the technology age is coming, but there's a lot of black schools, minority schools, Hispanic schools that never seen a computer. And that's one of the dangerous things, most dangerous things America can do is to not arm the young people. We're going to have an illiterate country, man, if we're not careful. We're going to have a country of people that don't care. And that's what change is about. Barry White continues with our discussion after this. <laughs> Channel 8's Job Track. We're getting results. Thanks to people just like you, Job Track is helping put Indiana's unemployed and Indiana's employers together. Hi, my name's Valerie Sherman. Thanks to Job Track, I'm working again. If you need a job or have one to fill, get with Job Track. It works for me. Together with Job Track, we can help get Indiana's own working again. Watch for Job Track exclusively on Channel 8. Oh, I'm not happy. 
But why? We watch you all the time. It's how you watch that upsets me. What can we do, TV? Try being more selective. Look for values in the shows you watch and discuss them with your family. Hmm, you're right. There's a lot we can do. <laughs> I feel much better now. Ah, uh, you understand me. Look for the best in TV. Bring out the best in you. A message from your Catholic neighbors in Indiana. Multi-talented Barry White is our guest on this edition of Black Focus. Barry, you're about to embark on something new. Uh, although I heard you mention that you were involved in gospel some time ago, there is now something called the first annual gospel festival held in Jerusalem. Right. Tell us about that. Um, Rod McGrew and I, we were invited to the Holy Land to see it, to feel it, to, to experience to experience it in January of this year of 83 and we went in and uh, incognito no one knew we were there literally and just saw the Holy Land it's very spiritual it's very active it's uh, when I say active I mean within the spiritual uh, boundaries uh, it's very peaceful it's very beautiful it's uh, serenity uh, in many ways you one would call it heaven in many ways uh, when you're standing in the Holy Land, it's no longer important what is true, what isn't true, what happened and what didn't happen. The only thing one knows is something did important, something very important happened here. And Rod was filled by the Spirit, I was too, and the people we were talking to wanted to do something positive. So he and I uh, sat down one night and put together the first annual Gospel Festival in the Holy Land, One Nation Under God. It is a gospel festival, it's a gospel concert that's going to be held on, from the 13th of August to the 21st in uh, the Holy Land. And it's a pilgrimage involved as well. People can see a pilgrimage, there's nothing new about pilgrimages to uh, the Holy Land. Uh, what makes this so exciting to us and so different is that we're not only going to experience it through sight, but we're going to experience it through sound. To hear Reverend James Cleveland, uh, Andre Crouch, Evangelist Shirley Caesar, the Southern California Community Choir, and yours truly, Barry White, hosting, and I'll be singing a couple of songs with everyone there. Everyone's looking forward to it. It's, it's a positive move. It's bringing people together, bringing uh, the sharing of cultures together, uh, the spiritual experiences together the educational factors together. Uh, the people in the Holy Land are just as excited about this, this event as the people are here. So I am thrilled to my heart to be a part of positive things. Anytime I can do something that brings people closer together, and this is one of them. I understand that there is a number. That number is 1-800-223-1780 for those of you who might be interested in going. Absolutely. Barry, I'd like you to stay. We want to do another show and talk about God and love. You got it. My pleasure. Jay Johnson for Black Focus. See you again next week with more of Barry White. Change defined by Webster as the act of passing from one phase to another. Our guest again today comes from just such a change, a sort of rags to riches story, if you will, from a poor struggling young man to a multimillionaire and owner of his own record company. We'll talk about Barry White's ideas on love and God on this edition of Black Focus. It's Isn't it? Just a few hours ago, we we had no idea that we would be this way. 
and good Sunday morning and welcome to Black Focus. Again, our guest is the very talented and multifaceted Mr. Barry White. Barry, welcome to Black Focus. Thank you, Jay. Good to be here. We're going to talk this Sunday about love and God. Compare the two. God is love. It's either that you just did. Um, the same thing that created the tree created me. Uh, the same element that created water created you. The same element that creates the wind and the rain created woman. God is everyone and everywhere. There's a song that Reverend James Cleveland recorded years ago. And he says, the moon and the stars, the fields full of grain, the soft summer breezes and the mountain rains, it all belongs to my father. That's, uh, in my opinion, sums it all up. Uh, I believe in man. I believe in woman. I believe that we can change anything that's wrong. I believe that God gave every man and every woman the power to change, to cause, a, to cause effect, to treat people <laughs> decently. We have the power to feed the hungry children, or not to feed. We have the power to give and, and administer justice or non-justice. We have the power for everything. What I heard you say was, I believe in man and I believe in woman. Do you believe in God? That is God to me. God is trees, air, women, men, children. Uh, we are made in his image. So my philosophy is, we are, if we are in his image, we must really be close to him. So man and woman must be a part of him. That is God. On many of your album covers, I see the word spiritual advisor mm -hmm. and then a name. Why do you have a spiritual advisor? Um, spiritual advisor is not a person who just administers uh, biblical spiritualness. A uh, spiritual advisor can be a person that you call up when you're feeling bad that you can talk to. Spiritual advisor, Jay, can be a person that will give you their, lend you their ear, their time, their, their heart, their ideas to whatever may be uh, negative in your life. Spiritual advisor in that case was the man who gave me my first shot in this industry, Larry Noons. He's dead now. And as long as I'm making music, his name will appear on the back of every album. Spiritual advisor, Larry Noons. That's the man that gave Barry White a shot. I don't want to bring up a sore point, but I realize that uh, there was a time in your life, not long ago, around the holidays, when you were touched by the loss of your brother. Absolutely. Tell us about that. Well, I love my brother dearly. He was, uh, we're 13 months apart in age. He was 37 when he was killed, December 5th, 1982. It was shocking, it was uh, devastating, but it wasn't unbelievable. It wasn't something that one would say it's impossible. My brother chose to live the life he led. He was no saint. He was a product of his environment as well. He was taught the same philosophy I was taught. He just chose, and it was his right to choose, how he wanted to live his life. And the reward for one struggling so hard to become successful, whether it's at banking or bank robbery, there are payments and rewards for every level of achievement. When you see a person who goes to jail or penitentiary for 15 years, that is, that is, in my opinion, a successful person. Uh, sure, there's no future as far as um, he's in the papers and he's doing business and he's earning money, but the man's in jail for 15 years. Not a lot of people in jail for 15 years. Uh, I chose to earn mine. He chose to take his. Um, I was taught by my mother since I can remember. When you're wrong, you're wrong. I don't care if it's your mother or your brother. When you're wrong, Barry, you're wrong. 
Were you ever wrong? Did you ever do oh, any yeah. of the things that your brother did? Hell yeah, I just didn't get caught doing it. What kind of things did you do? Stealing cars, um, gang activity. Uh, I didn't do as much, nowhere near as much as he did. He was committed to it. I did it more as, uh, more as surviving in the neighborhood, let everybody know where my stand is and where I am. I'm with everybody, I'm involved. But there came a day when I became a man and I put away childish things. Uh, my brother became a man and the things he did as a child, he kept doing and it caught up with him. Where are black men headed, Barry? Black men? To be a black man in America is very tough, my friend. Um, I sit from one side of the t at one side of the table now, but now as I speak, I'm talking about the other side that I once sat at. It is tough for to be a black man when a uh, man's pride is taking care of his family, uh, providing food for the table, providing a great environment, a uh, nice place to live, and suddenly someone says, you can't do that anymore. That's heartbreaking. It's very tough for a black man to become successful in a country that, that didn't give him the proper tools of education to deal with once he left that school place. Uh, it is very tough. Where we are headed, only God knows where we're headed. I, am, I don't have a crystal ball, Jay. I can tell you this. I hope that black men all over America realizes that the game outside is tough. It is very, very cold. It is very hard, but that game is not impossible. To win, you must get committed. It's tough to say that to a person that don't know how to weld or to build or to do carpentry. Just the average person who dropped out of school and now discovers at 28, 29, I messed up. It's never too late to learn. I promise we'll talk about love as Black Focus continues after this. It's coming to snacks are always after you, so you have to fight them with the golden snacks from the four food groups, like cheese wedges, eggs, apples, celery, crackers, and many more. Safe in good nutrition with balanced snacks from the four food groups. That news brought to you by your dairy council. Santa Claus Land, a holiday world of entertainment. Come for the magic, come for the music. can support Ronald McDonald House while saving a dollar fifty on admission to Santa Claus Land in Santa Claus, Indiana. Pick up a special coupon at any participating McDonald's. The fun's right here this year, Santa Claus Land. And welcome back to Black Focus. I'm Jay Johnson, your host, my guest, the very talented Mr. Barry White. And the topic, well, is love. Go from there. Um love is a very essential thing love is what we came here for love is the opening door nothing can offer you more if you know what i mean my whole life has been about love my mother was about love and still is she's always given us that smile in the morning that smile before we went to bed Mommy loves you guys. We love you too, Mommy. We learned how to say I love you at early age. We learned how to touch at early age. We learned how to respect and love at an early age. So when as one grows and grows, it becomes habits. Uh, I learned at a very early age that most negatives were positives for me. I learned at a very early age through love, I'll never work for anybody. I'm always working for Barry White. And blessed am I to be able to get paid while I'm learning 
your philosophy, sir. So love is many things. Love is knowledge. Love is warmth. Love is understanding. Love is people. God is love. Let's talk about women. What do we want to talk about about women? Women is God, still God's greatest gift to man. Whether he can acknowledge that or not, and there's many reasons why he can't. Why? Um, society's programming up today, we have taken emphasis off of respect of women. women. A lot of women have taken the emphasis off of respect of themselves. Um, in the married sector of life, people are marrying for the wrong reasons, Jay. Nothing's guaranteed. I don't care what reason you get married for. No one has the right to marry anyone. Um, you take someone spiritually, physically, and mentally. You don't need no one to stand there and tell you to say, I do, when you've already said it. Uh, we don't communicate with each other. Men and women today are getting further and further apart. Uh, man has done a very poor job with this great architect that God has given us. This uh, architect of man, he is the caretaker of this great land and we have fouled the air, the seas, our children and our women. And I must give responsibility of that to man because man boasts of how first he is. He is number one. Well, number one's responsible. Number one, uh, women are afraid today, Jay. That's why they are going for the liberation. They are in trouble and they don't trust us. Because in order for someone to trust you, be it man, woman, beast, or child, even a, with a dog, you must have credibility. You can't, a trainer will tell you if you want to chastise a dog for something he did wrong, you walk over to him, never call him to you. Because when you call him to you and chastise him, when you want to call him to you just to love him, he will think you want to chastise him. So you even have to have credibility with a dog. Now you know what you must have with a human being. Baby, I love you. Sugar, you're the only one for me. I'm going to build our life. I'm going to be responsible. I'm going to support you. I need your support. Uh, things like that, Jay, are becoming uh, extinct. Let me ask you, Barry, about jealousy. Now, there are those who find themselves, and I'll, I guess I'll choose the subject of men, okay. who find a woman, become very possessive, don't want anyone to look at <laughs> his woman and dare not dance or speak to her. What do you do with a guy like that? Is he right or wrong? Um, as far as he's concerned, he's right. <laughs> um, no one owns anyone. Man is very territorial like animals. Uh, <clears throat> we tend to possess and because we're so powerful uh, physically we can cause things to happen that normally wouldn't happen. Uh, a jealous man to me is a man who shouldn't have a right or reason. Let me rephrase that. Not that shouldn't have a right, shouldn't have a reason to be jealous. You see, if you own your J-O-B, if you own your job, there's security in that. Uh, most jealousies, most jealousies in America is insecurity. Uh, there's so many things out there, so many distractions. Uh, the man sees his woman looking at the guy in the Cadillac going down the street, and that'll get Or the guy that walks in with the three-piece suit and he only has two pieces. That are, well, what was you looking at the guy? You like his suit or something, baby? I mean, it's negative. Um, spirit about some men. There are reasons for that. It's, it's all in the system, Jay. It takes more than this show to get into that one. We need a lot of time to get into the reasons of things. It's, it's, not just, it's, just not, it's not just important that it's happening. I think what's even more important is why is it happening? 
Why is it divorce rate is higher today than it's ever been? Tell me why. Why is it that the cry today is don't get married? Hang loose, and the laws are going to take care of those philosophies. Uh, palimony now. You can't even hardly talk to a girl or a woman and say, baby, I like you. Would you like to like, to like me? That could cost you a court case. <laughs> uh, you can bleep this later, but it's all That's really what it is. It's American and it's going to take us to a depth stage because children are involved. What's more important than that man and woman's relationship is when they lay down with each other at night spiritually and physically communicate their bodies with, and become one. And that life comes from that moment. If that man and that woman does not have their life and their philosophies intact, that child is going to suffer. So he'll grow up at 21 and come in your house, Jay, where you and your wife is communicating and blow your damn brains out, brother. Black Focus continues Hello. with Barry White after this. Me. You try every day, but you can't figure out why in the world she went away. 